Look good. We're rolling. And we're and rolling. And we're rolling. And rewind. Hey, hey y'all. I'm Mike. And I'm PK. You, you already, already know. know. So last week I shared with you guys my coming out story. And I just want to reiterate how thankful I am for all the kindness, all of the love and support, and all of the words of encouragement that you guys commented on the video. It just meant the world to me. And this week, it really is the Mike show <laughs> for the Finally. first time. Uh, my name is Mike, and I'm a former college football player, a firefighter, rescue squad member. I'm from Southwest Virginia, and I'm gay. If you couldn't tell, no. <laughs> we like dudes. <laughs> What's up, bro? I've always known that I was gay, ever since I was a little kid. I just knew. Both my parents were inc incredibly accepting. Uh, we knew friends or distant relatives that were gay, and they always made it an emphasized point to say that that was okay with them and that they supported and accepted it. So I have, I'm, I have to say that I'm really lucky because my family's always been super accepting and open. And my family's always been really close. I got. A chance at a very young age to see what true love was and to see how a working relationship how good it looks and how beautiful like love can be when it's in a home with kids and dogs and the whole family um, and it it was amazing uh, but my world was turned upside down pretty early on uh, in middle school um, when I was 12, my dad passed away. Uh, that was one of the hardest moments of my life. My dad was my best friend and the person that I confided in, the person I felt most close to. And I felt like a part of me was ripped away when he passed away. Um, I felt like I had lost something that could never be replaced. And for a long time, I felt a void of emotion because I felt so much pain at such a young age that that I almost couldn't cry anymore. I couldn't, I couldn't produce some tears. I couldn't pr produce emotion. I couldn't be happy. I couldn't be sad. I, anything, because I just I was so shocked. I just didn't know what to do. And you always assume that it can happen to everybody else, but it can't happen to you. And it did. So it was tough. It was really difficult. And had on top of all of that, I knew I was gay, and I couldn't tell anybody and I couldn't just put myself out there so fast forward to high school um, I used football as my masquerade uh, to keep me away from from anybody figuring out who I was it was like oh I'm good at this I'm good at football and like that's a masculine thing and people will never associate me with being gay so I did it and I was good at it and I felt I felt a connection to it and I felt that that was the one thing I could focus all of my energy into and it would just be like, I, that's who I could be associated as, is Mike, the good football player. And I did everything I could to be like hyper-masculine. I, I joined the fire department my sophomore year. Uh, I joined the rescue squad because I thought I was like, okay, that's just another check mark that I can, you know, put on my resume to say that I'm not gay. Um, and a way for me to prove to myself that I wasn't gay. Even though I knew I was in some weird dimension of my life, I thought that I could like prove myself that I wasn't. Um, which kind of extends to my college life because I went to an incredibly conservative all-male school in Southwest Virginia, which if you didn't know, probably isn't the most accepting place in the world. <laughs> I chose to go there because in my mind, I thought that I could still live that white picket fence life with, with the wife and the kids, <laughs> and, uh, with the wife and the kids and the dog and the Range Rover and all of that, I thought that that's the life I could live if I just forced myself to do it. If I just force, it was like I was waiting for that last step, and it was like if I just do this next thing, then it'll push me over the edge, and I'll be able to live that, and life will be perfect and happy and roses. And it just was never there. Like everything I did just continued to like open up the void more and more in my heart and I just felt very like alone and emotionless. I did everything I could so that the gay label was never attached to me because I think that was what I was most scared of. So I joined a fraternity, I joined student government, uh, I was involved in service programs. I, I did everything I could, everything I could to just be that like 
macho man, you know? That's what I felt well, like. Well, he looks macho with his beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I felt like I needed to do. I felt like that was the most important thing. And in the meantime, I was lying to myself and everybody around me. People laughed because they thought that I was, I was just an angry person, but in reality, it was because there was a giant thing that I was holding back 24 hours a day, and it was like I wanted to scream it out and tell everybody, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't form the words to tell people. Um, so my junior year, I was walking back from a fraternity party one night with a girl, and her name's Ansley, and she's one of the greatest people I know, and I was like, hey, Ansley, I'm gay. <laughs> like, <laughs> drop a bomb. And she didn't stop walking, and she said, okay. And then we went back to my, my apartment, and we sat in my room and talked for probably like six hours just about life. And to be honest, that was the first time in my life that I felt like myself. It took me back to like my dad and it took me back to everything. It was like everything that had just built up like this giant ball inside my stomach of like depression and anger and hatred and, and fear was just like, just released. It was just gone. Like I felt like I could be me. And that was a possibility. But then I got a, built up a little bit of courage and I told this girl Kenzie that uh, I, she was another one of my really good friends for my whole college career. And it was the same reaction and I just started gaining traction and I'm like, I got this. Like, feeling I can, myself. Yeah, I'm feeling, feeling myself. myself. <laughs> I can do this. Like, I can do this. I can be myself. So then I realized that I needed to tell my mom. I went home for Christmas and we were, I remember the intersection we were sitting at in Richmond. We were next to the vet. I remember she had these giant glasses on. And I was like, hey, mom, I have something to tell you. And she just turns and looks at me. She's like, what? And I'm Did like, she say it like that? No, she didn't. I don't know why I gave her so much sass her. She definitely didn't have that sass. But I was like, hey, mom, I have something to tell you. And she goes, yeah. And, uh, and I'm like, I'm gay. And she goes, God, it took you long enough. What do you want for dinner? And I'm like, that's it? She's like, yeah, I'm your mom. Like, I love you no matter what. And I was just like, her just lack of like, like it, like it was just a Tuesday afternoon at four <laughs> o'clock, like nothing. Meanwhile, you're like sweating. Me meanwhile, inside, I'm like literally shaking. She just, it was nothing to her. It was like, okay, like, I love you. That was a giant moment in my life because I was like, everybody in my life knows now like my mom and my brother know and my best friend who's a girl knows so I had like I had an ally at school and I had allies at home and I felt like I was like yeah I have got all this confidence about being myself and I still didn't tell anybody else I didn't tell any of my other friends because because I just was terrified frankly I was terrified to do it and as I got closer and closer to graduation I got more and more scared because I had never explored who I was as an individual. I never taken the opportunity to like figure out who I was because I was so scared of what everybody else thought I was. And I went to Nicaragua and did some service work. Um, Casual. Went, <laughs> that's what you do when you don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I did some fly fishing and some service work with a program for my school. And I went back to my farm and I was sitting there and I just realized that I, I needed to just do something crazy and drastic and go live life. So I packed three suitcases and moved 3,000 miles away. I said, you know what, like if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm 22 years old and any choice I make now is not gonna be a mistake. It's gonna be a learning experience. And I had the opportunity to come out to LA and to be able to go to a gay club and see that it's okay and people accept it and embrace it. And then in walked the most beautiful and amazing person in my life. And Who? What's his name? His What's his name? name? I'm just kidding. <laughs> and he walked in and made me feel like I was the greatest thing in the world. And made me Because he is. And made me feel like I could fully be myself, even more than I ever thought I could. And challenges me on a day-to-day -day basis and <laughs> makes me happy. And I'll be honest, like, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have come out completely on Facebook. I wouldn't have, like, made it a deal to be gay because in my mind I thought it was like, okay, well, if people ask me, I'll tell them. But 
Otherwise, I don't want people to know. I was still scared of what people thought. And he showed me that it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what people think because at the end of the day, you should be judged on the content of your character. You should be judged for who you are. It's, it's not, hey, I'm gay and I happen to be Mike. It's, hey, I'm Mike and I happen to be gay. That's what it's all about. And that's where I'm at. So I want to leave you with one last thought. I had a professor in college who said to me that I have the power to change people's perceptions. And I think he was right, but not because I'm some college football player or anything like that. I think that, I think it's because I had confidence in myself. And I think that it, it comes down to, I realized that if I couldn't accept myself as for who I am, there's no way that anybody else could accept me at all. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's something that you have to find in yourself. And it takes time and it's not gonna happen overnight. And it's gonna be a struggle, some more than others. But at the end of the day, whether you're gay, straight, bisexual, transgender, once you've fully embraced who you are, there's nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can't do. So I guess any last words of wisdom would be to be yourself, no matter what kind of gay, lesbian, straight, transgender, bisexual you are, be it, own it, and be comfortable with who you are. Do you. Do you. <laughs> Just do you. Hey, and one day, you'll meet an amazing guy like him. Oh, I said that in my video. <laughs> yeah, but I get to say it too, because it's my video. It's a mic show, remember? <laughs> and? Remember to smile. Because it's worth it. Okay. 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 <laughs> one, two, two, three. Oh, I wanted another kiss. <laughs>